gentlemen, welcome to Text Messages, The Resurrection on the Parasite of the Show, standing behind the pulpit today in front of the green screen, also known as Rick Tex, actually only known as Rick Tex. You know, Ricardo Tex obviously works too, but, but you know, Rick is the, the expedited way of pronouncing it, or pronouncing it, pronunciating it. So, one of the things that we're going to discuss today, ladies and gentlemen, is, is uh, food and where it comes from. See, there was an article I read yesterday, and I couldn't find it for the life of me today, but it was about foods that came from China, and that there are a couple of the foods that, that they uh, illustrated that were a serious concern were fish, was the main one, mainly tilapia and cod. Farm fish was the biggest. One of the reasons why is because the water is really dirty, you know, the fish drink the water, they crap, and they urinate it, and they probably drink that, and that gets through their gills and into their bloodstream, and then the... That sends it all into their organs and their meat and everything too. And then when we eat that, that all gets into our system as well. It gets in our blood, it gets in our hormone receptors and into the into our brain ultimately. So you definitely don't want to eat fish that comes out of dirty water. And a lot of you probably heard about mercury poisoning as well. Now, mercury is basically found in all fish. It's a byproduct of coal plants. You know, lay off with mercury and then it gets into the water and all that good fun stuff. So then the smaller fish, they accumulate the mercury. The bigger fish eat the smaller fish, they continue to accumulate the mercury. So the biggest contributors to mercury poisoning is king crab, um, tuna fish is one of them, shark, mackerel, those types of things. And then the other seafood like shrimp, scallops, calabrini or whatever they call all those things also contain mercury to some extent, but in reality, the health benefits that you get from eating wild caught fish are going to mostly outweigh the ramifications to mercury. And then on the other hand, too, you can try to con consume foods that bond with, or not maybe not technically bond with the mercury, but help to expel and to detox your body of the mercury to chelate it out of your body and your system. Now, does that mean you get involved in all those online scams that have testing kits and that say you got a bunch of mercury and you got to buy their pills or their water to get rid of the mercury? I mean, you can try that stuff out. Certainly not discouraging experimentation of, of any ideas or functionality or testing or whatever the case may be. I mean, if anything seems like a good idea and you try it out and it seems successful, then, then hey, who just say it's not a good idea? So, so mercury and seafood definitely concerned. Now... One of the other concerns was the, was the apple juice. And now again, when, when they're actually making the apple juice in another country with dirty water and sending it over here, you know, to make the apple juice, you dilute it with water. So if you're putting dirty water in, it's going to stay dirty and it's going to be even more dirtier because you're going to have to add additional preservatives if you're sending it to the other side of the globe. So just fruit juices in general that, that come from other you know, distant countries with dirty water. It's always a good idea to avoid them, ladies and gentlemen. And then garlic was one of them that I was a bit surprised to see. Now, now you got to be careful because when you go to a produce section at your grocery store, Aldi, Cub Foods, Big Joe Rosso's local discount grocery store on the corner, they're not, they may not specify where the produce comes from. So you may have to inquire and ask around. Because there is actually, I think all the occasion they got they they got three little garlic cloves inside a big not a big but a small like weave bag of some variation. So you look at that and it says, and it specifically says on there made in USA or Obama Japan or China or USA. So if you know where the produce is coming from, it's just better to buy something closer to the local market because if you get produce that's from on the other side of the world it's going to have more preservatives and in the case of you know garlic it could have formaldehyde or sodium and benzoate and all this other which we'll get into a little bit later so i mean it's just weird preservatives that that aren't I mean, especially produce because produce is not labeled when you buy produce it doesn't say oh it has this ingredient that ingredient the other ingredient. it's if you buy a banana it's just a banana you don't know what it is you don't know how many calories in it you don't know basically anything about it except that it's a banana and some of the other so garlic and fish those were the two those were two and, and app, fruit juice apple juice in particular were some dangerous foods that you don't want to buy from China you know and pretty much any other food that comes from there as well 
Like every once in a while, if you go to the grocery store, you'll see a box of food with, with these weird designs and like an octopus, smiling octopus on it or something, and then the characters and weird font. And when you look at the ingredient list, it says you know, sugar, rice, sodium, cyanide, and just, just all this stuff that you don't really want to consume. And a lot of that, I mean, it's not saying that other countries are bad and that they're not trying to make themselves great again. It's just when you buy things from a distant land, they're going to have the preservatives in it. For example, if you live in Indonesia and you're buying stuff from the United States, it's probably going to have more preservatives in it than if you buy stuff from Indonesia. Now, that's just the reality of shipping and time to market and all that good fun stuff. Now, yeah, living in the north climate, obviously we don't have citrus fruits available, like an orange, lemon, lime, avocado. So then you definitely have to buy stuff from, from the southern USA, Florida, Texas, Jamaica, Ethiopia, whatever, whatever the case may be. Now, in, in the warmer climates, you know, they got longer growing seasons, so they're going to have different varieties, varieties of plants that, that they have available then. So it's basically... If you stick with, with your time zone and order food and get food from your time zone, you're probably going to be in good shape. Or one of the things, see, from other countries, they have when they bring produce into this country, they got to go through customs and this, that, and the other thing. And it's always hard to regulate what's going on there. And you can't look at every single item of produce to inspect it or anything. You just, they just do the best they can with the resources they have available. So that's why it's just a good idea to, to buy local and all that good fun. Now does that mean spend a fortune on organic food from a from farmer's market that you feel may be overpriced? Uh, maybe in some cases, but not, not all the time. Uh, I mean, once you, uh, chickens for example, I mean you can buy a whole chicken at Cub food, so just it's always a good idea to just try to pay attention to, to where it's from and if you have, see for example, food retailers, Aldi is an international brand based out of Germany. Cub Foods is based out of Minneapolis. So if I had a choice between buying a name brand Cub Foods chicken or a name brand Aldi's chicken, probably go with the Cub Foods one unless I know definitively that Aldi is sourcing their chicken from a local supplier. Now occasionally, Walmart, for example, they sell Bongard's Cheese, which is a company out of central Minnesota. Great company, farmer co-op to own and all that good fun stuff. So buying cheese from them, even though it's Walmart and they're an international brand and all that, the cheese, the Bongard's Cheese from Walmart, you know, it's a dollar cheaper per pound than from Cub Foods, even though Cub Foods is a local company. But when you definitively know that Walmart is getting the local stuff, then yeah, may as well just go with it and save the money and then the farmer co-op still gets their business as well too. Oh, yeah, it may be a little worrisome to support a big corporation and everything too, especially if they're up to devious tactics, but you, know, you are supporting the, it's a, it's a bit of a compromise. You are, you are supporting you know, local farmers and all that, so it's definitely something you want to do. All right, so getting into, the, getting into the news articles here that I actually did read. This was, it was naturalnews.com. There's a plethora of articles on there, which is probably why some are able to fall through the cracks. But the one that I read is a, there is a, com a common food preservatives that deprives your cells of oxygen and causes cellular damage. See, one of the things that you got, when you think back to chemistry, you think oxygen and what bonds to oxygen. So if you have these ingredients, these preservatives that are able to remove oxidants, you might think, well, they're antioxidants. That's, that's got to be great. It can bond with the oxygen and then expel it from your body. But one of the problems with preservatives is they get involved with your cells. You know, they latch onto them like leeches and parasites. And then they take the oxygen that the cell would normally take and use it for themselves. It'd be like if you um, had a roommate that moved in and didn't eat or didn't buy any food and ate all of the food in your fridge. Sort of like a, a leech or a parasite. So that's basically what food preservatives are doing to your cells and your mitochondrial and DNA. Sodium benzoate is, is a substance found in rubber, cement, paint stripper, and spot remover. Um, the sodium benzoate, that starves the cells of the oxygen. However, 
The reason why it's used as a preservative is because it eliminates fungus, yeast, bacteria, and mold in food. So, one of the things to keep in mind is, you know, I've harped on this before, but when you're eating food that, that's preserved and packaged and all that, it, it won't kill you instantly, but long term, it has far more horrible effects. Now, if you just eat raw, fresh food, I mean, a lot, a lot of food you do need to cook, even, even carrots and broccoli and things of that nature. I mean, a freezer is great, it works good for storing food, but it's just a better idea to avoid, see, package, a lot of food at the supermarket, milk is, milk is probably the biggest contributor to this, but milk, for example, is homogenized so that it doesn't separate the fat and the non-fat. You know, most milk is skim milk now, so it doesn't even have any fat in it, just void of any nutritional value. But it's homogenized, so it crushes the particles in little tiny pieces, so it has a longer shelf life, and it's pasteurized, so it kills all of the enzymes and bacteria and biotics, probiotics in there. You know, not anti Well, there, there might be some antibiotics in there from what they inject in the cows and everything. But milk, with the pasteurization, the homogenization, is basically used for a longer shelf life. The container is just some cheap plastic that probably leaches bisphenol A and Dalamates and all this other dangerous chemicals into the milk as well. That's just for, for a cheap container. See, back in the good old days, you could buy milk in a glass jug, and there are still some companies that do that. And what they do is they have a re a deposit, so you'll give them dollar fifty for the jar, and when you bring the jar back, you get a dollar fifty back. So it's um it's a pretty good deal actually. Then you don't have to be worried about drinking milk out of dangerous containers. And, but the other thing to be concerned with is milk from the store is actually just a milk-like substance. Unless you're getting raw milk from the farm with all the enzymes, probiotics in it, and the non-homogenized, non-pasteurized, that's about the only real milk. Or, you know, of course, breast milk, you know, cat breast, human breast, um, maybe a hedgehog. So, I mean, all, any mammal, any mammal has the capacity to breastfeed. And that's, so that's real milk, not a milk-like substance that you'd find at the stores, ladies and gentlemen. Another thing that the sodium benzoate does, it leaches essential nutrients from your body, and it leads to neurodegenerative disease. One of the things, see, distilled water is another very bad contributor to leaching nutrients out of your body. Like, for example, if you, if you, um, wash things with distilled water, it's going to grab a lot more of the nutrients and minerals that are in like a, a pipe or a, a sink or something like that, or just in any kind of container. Because the water, it wants to, it wants to bond with something. So that, that's why it's usually good. That's why if you drink a lot of distilled water, you could actually dehydrate or lose significant nutritional value based on that. Sounds a bit um, contradictory, but yeah, it's an unfortunate reality. Sodium benzoate is actually it's actually banned in some factories because the workers exposed to it develop leukemia, and you know they probably got their pants sued off. So that is, you know, a company they're they're there to make money. So if if their workers start getting leukemia, and they can definitively trace it back to the sodium benzoate used in some production manufacturing, then they're not going to use it anymore. But it's a little bit more difficult to prove in, in food environments, which is why it, it's still used as a preservative. It's mostly, no. Sodium benzoate is mostly found in acidic food. Vinegar, jam, salsa, dips, shredded cheese, fruit juice, soy sauce, soda, and diabases. Not really sure what that says, but... Oh, dressings. So, vinegar, jam, salsa, dips, shredded cheese, dressings, fruit juice, soy sauce, and soda. Now, the vinegar, apple cider vinegar is pretty good for you. Walmart seems to have the good apple cider organic vinegar, which still has the tartar stuff on the bottom. It's like a dark brown color. And it's a pretty fair price, too. So, that's definitely an ideal place to pick up your apple cider vinegar. And jam, salsa, and dips, you can make that all at home. You know, your own tomatoes or blueberries or whatever the case may be. Shredded cheese. 
With, with cheese, and that's sort of a principle that I use in a lot of things that I buy. See, if you get a block of cheese, it's going to have less preservatives in it because there's less surface area. Whereas if you're getting shredded cheese, it's going to be littered with preservatives because you have the more surface area exposed to the air and the atmosphere and all the parasites and fungus and bacteria and mold that could potentially grow onto it. So that, that's why it's just a good idea when you buy things like cheese, just to get it in a... Uh, as much of a solid state as possible with the least amount of surface area given the mass that you're buying. So you get two pounds of cheese, giant block, that's perfect. All you got to do is hack it up as you need it and it stores better and you don't need as many preservatives. So it's healthier and tastes better too. A dressings, a fruit juice, and soy sauce, soy sauce and soda. I mean, they're just dangerous chemicals to consume in the first place. Fruit juice nowadays is so adulterated with just just littered with sugar and yeah some of it's probably watered down and everything too. But I, I used to think fruit juice was healthy and then I went to the dental office once and between the teeth it was it was thinning, the enamel was thinning. So you know you look at that and you think well that's a rather sinister outcome. I mean this is a not not a good thing to happen and then you know, I talked to them a little bit and they're like yeah this is usually the caused by excessive fruit juice and at that time I was drinking I'd buy these V Fusion 32 ounce bottles and I'd basically suck on them all day so more or less the enamel on the teeth was just getting worn out all day from fruit juice which was allegedly thought to be healthy at that time but turned out it wasn't so healthy and a couple more items where sodium benzoate could be found toothpaste mouthwash cosmetic and even cough syrup so a toothpaste, you can make your own toothpaste. You get like bentonite clay, calcium carbonate, Himalayan salt, baking soda, clove oil, peppermint oil, and myrrh oil. And then you all just mix that into a container, leave it in a jar, and take a toothbrush in there and rub it on your teeth. Your, your teeth will get white. and You won't even have to use those weird plastic strips or any other strange, highly suspicious chemicals to, to make your teeth great again. Yeah, your breath will probably smell better too. Uh, mouthwash. I mean, mouthwash is good for killing bacteria on your on your toothbrush. And as far as actually cleaning out your mouth, I'm, yeah, it might work for that. But if, if you already drink alcohol, that that'll probably do it for you, and it'll have other positive effects as well. So it looks like we've um, maybe we're not quite to the conclusion of the show. We're definitely getting pretty close. We're, we're breathing down its neck. I had another news article here. It's it's three ways to improve eye health. I'm not, not really sure if I should get into that one yet. See, I'm not entirely convinced about the efficacy of this. I mean, I've obviously had glasses since probably 12 years old. Nah, that's not to say I've tried any of these eye exercises, but... But, you know, now that I put it out here, I should probably get into it a little bit. So cleansing the liver is the biggest, is the first one. Liver blood deficiency can cause blindness, dry eyes, floating and short-sighted. Apparently there's some intricate connection between the liver and, and your eyes, which is probably why they put it in here. So eye exercises, sun gazing to strengthen the ocular endocrine system. So apparently sun up and sun down, if you look at the sun when it's not so strong that it'll just blind you and not an ideal outcome. So apparently when you look at the sun, sun up, sun down, then it can do some beneficial things. Antioxidants, lutein and zeoxithin are found in lens and the retina of eyes. So the more than that, your body probably synthesizes them and sticks it in there, then it has some very beneficial purposes. But well, these antioxidants are found in apricots, broccoli, carrots, garlic, kale, mangoes, oranges, tomatoes, yams, and as stacks, taxalin is also another antioxidant that can be found in these ingredients as well. So, again, we just go back to eating healthy, exercising common sense, and apparently, probably the most, most that I got out of the article was sun gazing. I haven't actually tried that or utilized that yet, but... Probably won't be a bad idea. Maybe give it a shot if you're tired of glasses or tired of contacts or afraid of LASIK surgery, then it might be a good idea to give that a shot too. No, yeah, given where people are in their life and everything, I mean, maybe at sundown you're 
driving a car home from work and sun up, you're driving a car to work, so you don't really want to be staring at the sun while you're driving. It could be pretty dangerous. So, I mean, it's just know as much as you can, and given the lifestyle, you can use that to make, make the best choices given your circumstances. So that being said, ladies and gentlemen, while you're listening to, to text messages, we've reached the conclusion of the show. I thank you all for joining us this evening, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Thank you very much.